We're here at Unity of Springfield. It's good to be with all of you this morning. Thank you for your patience as we configured Zoom again. And just know wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here in Unity. I can't believe we have been online already for a year and some time, and I can't wait to get back together with you. And I'm sure you're all feeling the same way. Until that time, let's get started this morning with Barb and Sal as they start our day with Karen Drucker. There we go. And we start our day with love. Mm -hmm. I start my day with love. When I start my day with love, that's why I get Thank you, ladies. And so as we begin this day, we take love into everything we do throughout this day, throughout this week. We join across the very few miles with Unity Northwest Church in Des Plaines, Illinois. We join them in thought and in prayer this morning as we begin with this special prayer. I invite you to take these words in as if you're speaking them and saying them to yourself. I feel God's love and fold this day. I feel God's guidance in every way. I trust God's actions in my work and play. I feel the presence of God right here to lead my way and keep me clear, to fill each moment with love so dear. So this morning I do my part. I open wide my hands, my heart. My trust in God will not depart as this new day I gladly start. Thank you, God, for these words of wisdom as we go into this day with hearts full of joy and love. We are grateful, and so it is. Amen. We have a few announcements. Tuesdays at 11 a.m., Ruth is hosting our Silent Unity Prayer Service in Zoom. If you are able to join us for that Silent Unity Prayer Service, we would love to have you on Tuesday mornings. Tuesdays at 5.30, Karen, 
Chris Farishan is leading us in a guided meditation. If you are able to join us for the guided meditation, she would be glad to have you join her for that as well. And on Wednesdays at 5.30, Karen is leading us in the gathering meditation. If you prefer a contemplative time of meditation, this is perfect for you and she would love to have you join her as well. This is the last announcement we are going to have for the Unity of Springfield face mask. If you would be interested in picking up one of those masks, this is your last opportunity to make sure you get that order to Chris Farishan tomorrow because we are going to place these orders so we can get them in house and get those to you. We have an affirmation here in unity and I'm going to invite you to say it with me, if you would join me. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the source of all good. We have a vision statement. If you would join me, a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. And our mission statement, together, we recognize God is love, individualized in all people. Therefore, we provide a positive environment for spiritual growth that empowers all to be God's love in the world. Today's daily word, April 11th, is imagination, and Linda Cantor will share the daily word this morning. The word for today is imagination. Our affirmation I imagine limitless possibilities. In childhood, my imagination helped me see fascinating shapes and wondrous creatures in cloud formations. Picking up a twig, I might have pretended I held a wand that could give me magical powers. An ordinary packing box could become a vessel to sail on or under the seas an aircraft to fly higher than mountains, or even a spaceship I could fly to explore the stars. Much more than whimsy, imagination is a potent spiritual tool. I use my imagination with intention to give shape to my dreams and goals. Although my childhood may be a memory, I am grateful that I can still use my imagination to create the life of my dreams as I envision possibilities beyond the reality I know and the world I see. And from Luke chapter 10, verse 24, for I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Again, the word for today is imagination and our affirmation I imagine limitless possibilities. Thank you, Linda. Arben Salo, we're going to now share some special music preparing us for our time in meditation with Love Begins With Me. Here's a song that I wrote several years ago, about four years ago back in Fresno, and love begins with me inside. It's an inside job.
it starts in here. It starts in here and shimmers everywhere. Grace begins with me. I am the grace I wish to see. Grace begins with me. I am the grace I wish to see. Faith begins with me I am the faith I wish to see faith begins with me not out there it starts in here not out there it starts begins with me I am the love I wish to see love begins with me not out there it starts in Well, let's just take in a breath. And as we release that breath, we allow ourselves to just relax into our chairs and into our seats, allowing that love that we are to come forth, to shine through. As we relax and we let go, we feel that peace that is God and we breathe into that peace. And we truly know all is well. We let go of anything that has hold, been holding us back this week. And we open to that Christ presence that exists within us to just come forth in this sacred holy place. We know that we are content and that no one can reach us in this sacred holy place when we are one with our creator and we are open to that wise wisdom that comes forth in this silence. And so let's just take a few moments and rest in that silence where no verbal words are spoken and we are listening with ears wide open. We just take in what we need to hear.
in this moment, I invite us to remember we are loved, we are loving, and we are lovable. Just breathe into that knowing and that understanding and that truth. Just take that in for a moment. Our true nature is to be loving, lovable, and to know we are loved. So I invite us to bring that back into this day, into this space. Thinking, thinking that divine intelligence for providing us with this wisdom, for anything else we may have needed in this day and in this moment, And as we prepare to come back to this time and this place, we know that all is well. We fear nothing. Knowing the truth, we are loved, we are loving, and we are lovable. When you're ready, I invite you to begin wiggling your fingers and your toes and to become more aware of the room around you So when you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes. So today, our talk is titled, Love is the Answer. And every month this year, we are focusing on one of Unity's 12 powers. And in April, we are focusing on the power of love. And there's a lot to be said about love, so stay tuned. A group of professionals posed this question to a group of four to eight year olds. What does love mean? The wisdom of a five year old. Love is when a girl puts on perfume and a boy puts on shaving cologne and they go out and smell each other. <laughs> and this from a seven year old. Love is when you tell a guy you like his shirt and he wears it every day. Sweet. And this wisdom comes from a five-year-old. Love is what's in the room with you at Christmas if you stop opening presents and listen. Wow, they taught her young. At one time, Jim Jackson, a silent unity prayer associate was asked to define love. And this is what he had to say. When I think of love, I immediately think of Zelda. She's a beautiful girl with the biggest brown eyes and an enchanting smile. She has the longest, shapeliest legs you've ever seen, four of them. Zelda is my dog and Zelda makes me think of love because what a dog expects from a person before they give love to that person is this, nothing. And yet for me to get the most from that love, the love Zelda gives me unconditionally, I must reciprocate. The more love I give her, the more love she gives me and the more love I want to give her and so it goes. Love is a snowball tumbling down a hill. Once it gets started, it's nearly impossible to stop. Here's another definition of love from Rose Houston. When she answered the question, what is love? She said, love at its core does not attach itself to any object or person. Love is the essence of everything seen as well as unseen. Love is not primarily a relationship to a specific person. It is an attitude an orientation of character. Love is an activity, a power of the soul. It is an outpouring of our godhood. Love is indeed a faculty that requires no object. We have been given a gift. 
this glorious human experience that we have. And it's understandable how we can all get caught up in the drama of human love. Human love tends to be conditional. And haven't we all been in relationships where we thought, I will love you if you do it this way. I will love you more if you are aligned with my thinking. I will be loved by you as long as I fit in your model of how I should behave and think and feel and be. As human beings, we put conditions on the love we give and the love we receive. Our relationships are sometimes filled with if onlys. This could really work if only he'd see it my way. This could be much smoother of a relationship if only we saw eye to eye on money, religion, the kids, or whatever we want to insert here. We tend to think of love as something to fall into or out of. We tend to focus on love as something that we give or receive. And all of that may be true, but I would suggest that just that is sadly incomplete. As we open ourselves to the divine nature of love and allow that unconditional love to flow through us, touching every aspect of our lives, we come to realize more fully that love is an energy. Love is an energy. Eventually we come into an awareness once again that there is only one source of that energy in our lives and in the universe and that energy source is God. And God that created us loves us without conditions. And this is the truth. There is nothing we have ever said, thought or done that could make God love us more. There is nothing we have ever said, thought or done that could make God love us less. The God that created us, the God that sustains our very life cannot love us anything less than fully just as we are. We are in the mind of God, lovable, loving, and loved, period. We are children of the divine and unconditional love is our birthright. That love that flows from God is not only without conditions, it is eternal. This past year, many of us have lost loved ones, four-legged friends as well. Their physical presence is no longer with us, but the energy of love can never be diminished or destroyed. We are talking more than the human relationships of love when we say that. We are speaking of the eternal nature of love. We are alluding to the fact that it is impossible to lose ever the energy of divine love from our lives. Our human relationships may transform. They may even end for a variety of reasons, but love once expressed remains an energy force that can never be destroyed. Pete Hamill, a New York reporter, once said, memories are man's greatest inheritance. And isn't that so true? Last year, we focused on the quest, a year-long series devoted to self-examination and self-discovery. And one of the questions proposed in the book is this, how can I get more love? The real question is, how can I express more of the love I already have? There is a huge difference between these two questions. How can I get more love and how can I express more of the love I already have? And answering them takes us on two very different journeys. Spending our lives trying to answer, how can I get more love, takes us to a place of trying to be someone else someone else wants us to be. It turns into people pleasing. It takes us to a place of fear because what if the other person doesn't like how I look, how I sound, or how I think? 
what then? Spending our lives trying to get more love takes us down a very lonesome path, compromising our identity and putting the power of our existence into the hands of another. There is once a song that this brings to mind what this is really, what this kind of love is really about, and it's looking for love in all the wrong places. That's what we're talking about here. And on the other hand, answering the question, how can I express more of the love that I already have? Focuses our energy inward and places the power where it truly resides within ourselves. We came here to this human experience with all the love we need from the infinite storehouse of the divine. We have already been given in full measure an abundance of love. The secret of experiencing it fully, however, is in giving up the false belief that anything has been withheld, that we have anything more to get, and to embrace the truth about love that it's ours to receive and to give without strings, without any attachment to outcome, without any expectations of what will be given back to us. Love is intended to be given from human to human as it is given from God to us. And that is freely, fully, and without conditions. Loving ourselves and all others simply because our essence is love and because we choose to no longer resist the truth of our being. Loving simply for the pure, unadulterated joy that comes from loving. It takes me back to the Zelda story. The more love you give a dog, the more love you get back. The more love you give a child, the more love you get back. Unadulterated joy. We are a society that looks for payback when it comes to love sometimes. What's in it for me? What's the bottom line? What am I going to get for my investment? We want some guarantees that if we do X, then Y is gonna happen. But we all know that love doesn't work that way, does it? The quest says that Christ's love, true divine love is expressed not to be reciprocated, but to make us completely alive completely alive to the power and presence of God, completely alive to the joy of living in the moment, completely alive with love that seeks nothing except a fuller expression of itself. There's a wonderful piece called God Said No. And there are many, many renditions of this poem online. And this is one that I found in the files of a unity minister. I asked God to take away my pain and God said, no, it is not for me to take away, but for you to give up. I asked God to make my friend whole and God said, no, her spirit is whole. Her body is only temporary. I asked God to grant me patience and God said, no, patience is a byproduct of tribulations. It isn't granted, it is earned. I asked God to give me happiness and God said, no, I give you blessings. Happiness is up to you. I asked God to spare me pain and God said, no, suffering draws you apart from worldly cares and brings you closer to me. I asked God to make my spirit grow and God said, no, you must grow on your own, but I will prune you to make you a little bit more fruitful. I asked for all the things that I might enjoy life and God said, no, I will give you life so that you may enjoy all things. I asked God to help me love others as much as God loves me and God said, finally, you have the idea. If we had a car outfitted for the Indianapolis 500, we wouldn't fill it with low octane fuel and recycled oil, would we? because we know that what we put in our car will determine its performance. 
if we really thought that we had a shot at winning the Boston Marathon, we wouldn't survive on a diet of chips and Twinkies. What we put into our body affects its health. Yet we often ignore what we're putting into something even more powerful and that's our minds. We fill our minds with junk food of gossip or fear or hatred, anxiety or judgment. In Proverbs we read, as a man thinketh in his own heart, so is he. We are called by our way shower Jesus to a higher standard. We are called to think kind thoughts, to fill our minds with love, to empower our lives by empowering our minds to their highest possible thoughts. We are called to express through every word, through every deed, the love that we are, the love that we came here to be. One person who wrote so eloquently about love is Paul. And in 1 Corinthians 13, 2, he said, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. We are here to be open channels for the love of God to flow through. How else will the storehouse of infinite love make its way into the world if not through us because we are how God gets around. We are the vehicles through which love will be expressed. And Paul says it pretty clearly. We have everything else but not love. We are nothing. The expression of love begins inside ourselves. We cannot give to another what we don't have for ourselves. I cannot give you a million dollars if I don't have a million dollars. I can't lend you my car if I don't own a car. And I can't extend love to you, precious unconditional love to you, if I haven't or won't give it to myself. Recently, I ran across a book titled Learning to Love Yourself, A Guide to Becoming Centered by Gay Henricks. And there's a quote I'd like to share with you out of this material. I had directed all of my love toward others as a way of getting them to approve of me. I didn't know how to direct that approval and tenderness toward myself. My conditioning had taught me that real love meant duty, obedience, submission, sacrificing for the sake of others and giving my spark to others. I gave the power to validate me to others with whom I was in relationship. I focused on the person whose approval I sought. She says one more thing in this book that I think is important. And this is what she said. Adult life is a process of becoming a guardian angel to ourselves. Adult life is a process of becoming a guardian angel to ourselves. And what I hear in that statement is she's really talking about self-care. We have to tend to our own needs, make sure we're being spiritually fed, make sure we are an expression of that love because we feel love ourselves. Loving ourselves is not being egocentric. Loving ourselves is quite possibly the most important thing we could do for the world. Loving ourselves says that we accept God's opinion of us. And think for a moment about just how much ego it takes to reject God's opinion of us. The divine creator says that we are whole and perfect and loved and lovable. And we say, well, maybe everyone else on the planet, but certainly not me. We are made in the image and in the likeness of perfection. And yet we find a million reasons to not love ourselves. And in fostering that stance, we create a life where we cannot fully love others as well. 
Love is a choice. We will judge others as harshly as we choose to judge ourselves. We will love others as openly as we choose to love ourselves. There is a wonderful story about President Calvin Coolidge who once invited friends from his hometown to dine with him at the White House. It's a big invite, right? So these down home folks were so worried about their table manners that they decided to do everything that the president did. The strategy succeeded fully until the coffee was served. They watched the president pour some of his coffee into a saucer and they were confused, but they did the same. And they watched as he added sugar and cream to the saucer and he stirred it up, so they followed suit. They then watched as the president bent over and put his saucer on the floor for his cat. The lesson here for me is about so much more than table manners. There is an important lesson about loving ourselves enough to be real, to be fully authentic. There is a moral here about trusting in the perfection of God's creation, and that's you and me. To know that we can be in any situation, in every circumstance, uniquely who we are. That it is safe for us to love and be loved simply because we are, and that's it. We are God's creation, divinely perfect, filled with love, and our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to be a fuller expression of that love. There have been times in, that I have been in search of a deeper love. Sometimes these kinds of things are experienced in holy places. We go in search of these things, right? I have gone out of my way to find sacred holy spaces that I have heard about. In Wyoming, there is a place called Legend Rock, and it's said that the veil there is the thinnest between the two worlds. Getting to Legend Rock is a bit of an Indiana Jones adventure. However, you have to go to Hot Springs State Park and request a key to the site. You need to then drive outside of town 20 miles and turn off the main road and follow an interesting road map which tells you to turn at mailboxes and Y intersections. And finally, you, you arrive at the sacred site and you need to unlock the gate and walk down a path that's full of petroglyphs. Is it necessary? Aren't we temples of God wherever we may be standing? Aren't we always standing on holy ground? Isn't the deeper love we are seeking within us? I invite us all to go into this week with a renewed commitment to accept the truth of our being, that we are lovable, loving, and love. Going forth this week with a renewed commitment to express that love to God, to ourselves, and to everyone we encounter, it has been said that love is the only true creative force in the world and it lives within you. Wherever you are standing, you are standing on sacred and holy ground and God's unconditional love enfolds you wherever you may be. And that's the truth. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Next week, we continue on with the power of love. Until that time, we just breathe into this knowing that we truly are expressions of the divine and we are full of love for one another, for each of us and in our lives. Now is the time in our service when we prepare our offertory. And so I know some of us give online. You can see our chat box for that. Some of us go out there to the website and we click a button and we donate. And if you drop it off at the church or mail it in, we do receive your love offerings. And we truly appreciate that this ministry spiritually supports you. So let's just take these gifts and envision them in our mind, or if we actually have them in our hand, we hold them in our hand. And we know that divine love multiplies and blesses, moves in and through us, 
and it blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we give, and all that we receive. Thank you for this knowing and this truth, and so it is. Thank you, God. Amen. Our special thanks goes out today to Jackie, Chris, Betty, Paul, and Becky for spending their weekend in board training. We spent a half day Friday and a full day on Saturday in training together. And this ministry will surely be blessed by their leadership. They did a great job and they have some exciting ideas and we can't wait to get started. So loving and blessing them all. So let's join together in our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all truly is well. Thank you, God.